Hello, hello. So in this video, I'm just going to show you a quick way on how to use the new Notion API so that you can automate like anytime you get a response from Google Forms and put that into a specific Notion database that you've created. Okay, so I'm just going to fill up this form to show you what it looks like. So use case for this would be if you had like a feedback form after a talk etc and then you know you want to collect that data automatically inside of notion that is possible so here we have just a fill that form you'll submit that and depending on this the speed of zapier um usually it takes a few minutes this one i did this in advance took around two minutes to propagate so yeah that is this is how it looks like right so it's automatic and it looks like this right now so i will share i will share this um workflow with anyone who wants it so you could just copy it it'll be in the link somewhere um, around this video and so yeah that is how it looks like you can skip this part uh the other parts it's just generally like how the next part of this video is just generally like how to build it, like what ingredients do you have to make to cook something like this up. So before you even go to Zapier, you need to set up your form inside of, well, Google Forms. Or I use Google Forms, you can use Typeform, you can use whatever form maker you have as long as it you know connects with Zapier. But yeah, Google Forms. So what you need to have is first, you make a new form and of course you do all of this and I will go into them later as you can see uh, this is my form this is my form this is my form and this is these are my responses right so take note of the columns right the kind of content that you can put so in my case I have a lot of tabs <laughs> and the questions that I have are name rating it from 1 to 10 what the website is suggestions for improvement uh, website is just basically where can we find you email address and whether they want to receive my newsletter or not um, so take note that the text so these are these are here and then you just so you create this form with all the questions that you need and then the next thing that you want to do is create a new page or database inside of notion specific to that data uh, just a new like database page on its own so you have to make sure that for every question that you have in google forms you have a corresponding oh see uh, that's the automated one that we put in just now so for every um question that you have in google forms you want one column inside of notion and you can actually choose um which column it would go to so no need to be like super duper exact like for example uh where can we find you what i mean by that is what their website is in my data or something like that so these are supposed to be connected or when i ask um rate the talk from 1 to 10 the column here is rate from 1 to 10 so it's not 100 percent ma match and that is okay so um, let's go into setting up. So Google Forms, easy enough. Next thing that you have to set up is this one. What do you need to put in mind right now? So as of now, as you can see, every, or this is just my observation, every content, the property type, if it is text, it does not register for some reason. So my questions on suggestions for improvement and where can we find you we're not registering i don't know if it's just my setup or just a bug but so far i cannot get that one to work what does work is everything else so name is here and then rate from 1 to 10 i turned it into a select property and i set these up in advance um just 1 to 10 to match it and i tried it with a link and it works 
add the news that there is a checkbox where we can set it up later like if they click yes here um, it will automatically check like for this one uh, for quick test number three we input we replied as no and so it is it returns as an empty checkbox which is what you want so it's set up correctly so yeah that is some um, like setting up for notion setting up notion and setting up google forms the other thing that you need to do is go to this link notion.so slash integrations and you need to set up the api keys for your workspace so i have a lot here um this is how you do it you just create a new integration add in a new name sample api Two, and then click the workspace where it's in I just have so this one is as you can see the workspace is playground so that is for my testing so you want to associate that with the correct workspace otherwise it's not gonna work you submit that and so this is your token do not show this to anyone so this is so this is how you use this right I just I just used internal integration for now so you want to share it and as you can see the new update gives you an option to add integrations so you just click that one and once you've had this API set up you can just select oh as you can see it's already here so you can select an integration where it would work with so I'm not gonna touch that but you just click it and then you'll see if it works it will show as an integration and you can allow access or remove it as well so yeah that is how you do it of course save your changes so now that the you know their ingredients are ready it's time to get cooking so here is the you go into Zapier and so here is the workflow this is how you do it so you first of course um, if you haven't connected Google Forms yet, go ahead and do that. So you just click here, Google Forms, and then trigger event is what starts the entire automation. So what do you want it to be? It can be a new response or when a response is modified. So, you know, if you're just starting out, then just do a new response. Nothing too fancy and just continue. Choose the specific account that it is the form that you want is connected to and you have to set up that trigger so this is bottleneck number one for me because uh when i made this right uh i it wouldn't it wouldn't appear so you have to make sure that there is a corresponding google sheets already set up otherwise it will not appear here so it has to be a spreadsheet so make sure you do that And so worksheet is just form responses one. You ha want that to match. Uh, the reason why this is three instead of like four, uh, I deleted one row that I was when I was first testing out. But yeah, um, you can refresh if you're not seeing it. But if not, then just double check that you have that spreadsheet set up, and you can test the trigger. So this is what we're gonna use response. Let's try response A, just to test it. So that is your testing phase. And if it is, it returns with this check mark, then you're good to go. So next is just creating a new database item in Notion. So this is why we want to have all the ingredients ready before you touch anything in Zapier. It's just um, smoother that way. So of course, click on Notion and then the action event is basically the response to your trigger. So you have a trigger and an action. So this is your trigger, right? Every time there is a new response in the spreadsheet, this is what happens. So if this happens, this will happen. So if you have a new response, then I want a new item in my Notion database. So that is what we're choosing here. Create a database 
create an item in a database and then you choose the account so I've already had it set up and so now you want to select the specific database you want your data to be put in right so this is the container for all the information coming from your Google Sheets and so this is the name so we just named it Google Forms to Notion so it's easy to see and then so now you've chosen which database it's going to go to it will automatically populate with the columns that you have so as you can see this is where the like what's your website property is not showing up so these are your columns um, in Notion they're also called properties so that is basically that is basically where it will match so this is why we need to set this up first otherwise you'd have to go back refresh something so just do this part first before you do Zapier and so it should populate with the specific property names from Notion automatically if not you could just refresh your fields so this one when you click this one and it asks you to insert data it's actually getting that data from your trigger which is Google Forms right so for example name you want it so you're basically just matching point A to point B like okay I want the response for this name to correspond with this property here in Notion so you just click the appropriate ones rate the talk from 1 to 10 is rate from 1 to 10 where can we find you was supposed to be the website and it is not working right now I think and then email address this one does not have data for our test data and if I want to receive the newsletter so you just click yes content is actually the inside of here so I'm, if you're familiar with Notion, which is, you know, you're probably watching this because you already know about it. The content is basically when you click on this page, the content is the one that will appear here. So yeah, if you put anything here, it will, let's see, let's put that there. It will populate with the content from this response and then you click on continue. And so we are going to retest the action just to show you. So here is the newest one. As you can see, there is content inside. If you open it, it is the response that we made. So just some things to, it's not like it can be overwhelming at first, but once you have that down, it's going to be super easy for you. So yeah, it makes sense. Everything makes sense. So it basically, when we tested it out, it triggered the whole thing so that you can see if the data is being populated correctly or not so you can make changes I usually test a ton ton of times before deploying any automation so just be sure about that but basically you're done that those are the steps on how to create an a connection between Google Forms with a specific notion database so use cases for this um, feedback forms wait lists um, sign up to my newsletter kind of forms you know there's a lot that you can do with this you can even have maybe you're a coach like me and you have questionnaires from your students or coaches or clients and they can respond to that in the form and it will automatically go into a specific notion database that you can then use to filter out etc etc with their I don't know I'm imagining like them having an individual client dashboard and having specific filters for that already like you can make a whole complicated like full-on client relationship management workspace or dashboard with this new API so yeah the last thing that you need to do is just turn this on so that well it runs and you should be good to go so thank you for watching this video again I will be sharing this workflow 
inside like I don't know around this video somewhere depending on where I where I put this video but yeah make sure to copy that try it out and like and subscribe yeah I hope if you found this useful please share this to someone who could use it and subscribe to my channel or subscribe to my newsletter thank you